slightly sloped ridge. Should be coming to a stop here shortly. Copy that. Just called in at uh, 1827, and they've so been taking be about five and to six minutes. And Tom Hansconnect was employed as a macroinvertebrate taxonomist for 26 years with Litter and Associates in I Mobile, Alabama. And he's now Copy retired, so but still loves deep sea research. So bridge. thanks for yep. joining us and top. helping Move us interpret yeah, the, all um, of the different, the very different organisms that we find down here in the deep sea. Bypass the waypoints sure. and just go as high as we can in the time that we have left. So we're just so going just go up as directly up slope, which they found to be about two eight five two nine zero. Copy that. So the ship moves have been at two eight five. Sounds good. So the ship is stopped currently. I'll, uh, what do you got, 67? I'll let you push out a little bit, and then we'll make another move. Sounds like a plan. Copy that. Hey, watch it. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, that pretty much sums it up. Sounds good. Uh, could you uh, zoom in on the D2 sonar to 20 meters, maybe? Copy that. D2 is at 20. Thanks. We can go ahead and call that move in, I think. Copy that. Yeah, it looks pretty bare. Uh, another see. 30 meters in at 285. Sure. Sounds good. Bridge, this is ROV nav. We'd like to make another move, exact same thing. Three zero meters at two eight five degrees, speed zero decimal two, please. Good copy, Bridge, thanks. Tilting up my camera, looking at you, 45. This looks like a Copy that. larger mound. Yeah, maybe. Looks like the slip dies a little bit, might rotate. Maybe we'll get a little peak. Bless you. Now that looks more like one of the crab kind of mounds. Of course, we didn't see who lived in the previous one, but mm -hmm. one of the chat room scientists had suggested it looked like a crab burrow. Certainly bigger than some of the worms that we have. Well, actually, this is Nav. Just want to let you know that we moved another 100 meters. It should be about 800 total. Doesn't look like anyone's home. So, Nav. And we've moved. 800 yes. meters since touching do down, so we've covered a lot of the sea floor here. And what would be our reaction if something were to happen with the ship propulsion? Stand by one. Currently have a current, a surface current of uh, 1.5 knots at 49 degrees. So that is going to hit us on the We just passed over what I think was another eel pout. Pushing us do, northeast. Do you think that's what it was? I think it was. Yeah. And the wind is going to be. It looked a little bigger than the ones we've seen. I mean, the, the wind's only six knots, so that probably wouldn't affect us too, too Coddleton much. Coddleton wasn't so I, I would tucked around. I would assume that we would drift to the northeast. Um, okay. star. Pretty much directly northeast. All right. That means. See, so then copilot. <coughs> yeah. uh, let's see. Quickest for you would be to turn. If we go northeast, I guess just clockwise. Yep. But that would put a. The sea yeah, star we in, saw right? maybe well, a I neo more faster. I think we just want to. We'd want to get into tow. I don't know if we're going to get a possible. zoom in on it. The turns afterward. Yeah, so in that case, the pilots go, are working on just orientation and just had another watch yeah. change. And then, and, then port, and then we'd be streamed perfectly. Yeah. yeah. Sounds like a good plan. And there's no, no 
A swatling uh, tree, suggested that the sediment color. Uh, there shouldn't be. The bailout uh, is currently northeast, so I just zoomed out and didn't see anything that jumped out of the sediment okay. of algal bloom from above. We should be pretty, pretty safe for over 2,000 meters. Great. <laughs> or maybe that all those brittle stars. Why? Why would you think the ate the algae? And today? That's uh, why it's different here. Why do I think it would be? I think that's because you're going saying. with the current. And mm. if we were to to and pull forward, we'd be fighting. And confirmed that that was the that we just went well. over. Like so it would be easier to Nove. and easier on the engines mm -hmm. to just go with the current where we're in a relatively safe area. Yep. As far as terrain. Good. So, co-pilot, you would go to starboard to line up with the ship, and pilot would go to port. A yes, couple so of degrees to line up? Yeah. Copy that. Hey, Washi, go ahead. Yeah, on the, uh, to starboard. And this, again, it looks like what Chris Ma previously identified as a neomorphaster. Let's However, if we had time and and to get rid of the turns, him. it would be better for a co-pilot to go to the starboard, correct? We if, saw one earlier had, that was um, missing a, a limb but regenerating it. So. Our video. Are you sure it's clear? No, I, Interesting I would, to I would see go that. to starboard and actually lasers. today that would, uh, sure, lasers off. That would actually straighten out the, the turns and the tether. Yep. That's so the classic pentameral radial symmetry. It would be both the quickest way symmetry. to get to streaming tow configuration of and it would take many the of the asteroids. But generally, we would just want to get into See tow two and feet? Well. Sure. Yeah. I mean, if it's about the Not same, if they're both about right 180, now. it's better to get the turn. Right. But the if sediments. you'd have to turn 270 to get the turn out or whatever, then you just wouldn't worry about it. Gotcha. Yeah. That's great, pilot. Thanks. Copy that. Uh, video, take what you need, and we'll keep moving on. Video is clear. All right. You guys want to introduce yourself since we've got a new uh, pilot shift? Uh, yeah. Well, actually, does this a good time to introduce the uh, new front row? If you're all settled, that'd be great. Awesome. Hi, everyone. Uh, this is the front row. We are all from the Global Foundation for Ocean Exploration. Uh, currently piloting is good Sean Kennison. Thank you. And I'll let the uh, rest of my team members introduce themselves, starting with my co-pilot. Uh, sitting co-pilot now is uh, Dan Rogers. Sitting in the navigation seat is Lars Murphy. On the far right is Roland Bryan at video. And in the back in the video clipping chair, I'm Emily Nero. And in the back row, I'm Leslie Sauter from the College of Charleston. Pilots, move just and I'm the geology up. watch lead for Put this expedition. In. Yeah, cover that. Same thing. And I'm Cheryl yep. Are you from still the facing up slope at uh, 285? Yeah. And, yep. I'm the and biology does that agree with what we see on high pack? Not really. Not really. But we're still moving northwest, so yeah, we that's should. fine. I think, uh, what does D2C here? Look up for a sec. So you're looking at like, more like a three, three one zero, like three one five. Three one five. Yeah. yeah, I'll turn my head. Let's do three one five. Copy that. Three one five. So you Another thirty meters. Saddle over to starboard, Sean. Yeah. Yeah, thirty meters. It sounds good. Okay. Looks like you're almost there. I'll call on the move. That sounds good. Bridge. This is ROV now. We'd like to make another move, three zero meters at three one five degrees, speed zero decimal two knots, please. Good copy, Bridge. Hey, Wash nice. One, go ahead. Um, I don't believe so. It I looks just, off. I, was, I clicked off. Oh, copy. All right, thanks, Wash. Oh, it's solved, really. I think we got it off.
Is this the first rat tail we've seen today? I honestly don't remember. I think <laughs> the it days is. are, are uh, merging. And these are often right, um, around structures such tail, as corals. So maybe, maybe there are good things to come. <laughs> corals, anyway. Mm -hmm. yeah, there's been lots of other good things. There certainly has been. Did we kill lasers real quick? Lasers off. Thanks. How much more bottom time do we have now? Nazumia, correct? Mm -hmm. I'm Great learning. Job, Leslie. I'm learning. Trying. It's all Latin to me. <laughs> Looks like we have about another 50 seconds. How many minutes. times on this expedition have I good. wished that, that I took Latin? Time, right? <laughs> so I can <laughs> pronounce that all these names include better. A few minutes of setup time, or uh, that does not include until okay. probably like 52, 53. Copy. Sounds good. That was I mean, Nizumia Berdi Berdi. It doesn't really matter today since we're just making our way up slope at whatever pace. From Andrew we Quattrini can. Um, of Harvey Mudd College. thing to do college. when you sit down and nav is to try to figure out what your average pace needs to be for the rest of the bottom time to be able to reach the final waypoint. Um, so if you wanted to just kind of practice that, let's say we were at we wanted to hit waypoint four right at the end of the dive. You know, we can use the calculators to figure out what our average pace needs to be to get there. Copy that. So we have not yet made a collection today, and there is some interest in a sediment slash organism sample. Earlier I said that might be difficult in terms of the clarity of the water, but um, if we find maybe one of those larger mounds, we might be able to explore yeah. who lives there. Well, actually, just let me know. Okay. If, uh, that's something you like. Of course, I'm always up for a sediment sample, but I am concerned about the turbidity that will result from from it. Um, looking at 40 degrees, Sean. Certainly Copy. if we see another of those sea pens, that would be a good excuse. Um, Roland, I can confirm that. Uh, the comment that I made earlier, I was hearing Dan, and I have a feeling it was uh, following the introductions, but perhaps what you just said is correct. Yeah, it looks like we need to average uh, decimal one. Decimal one? Decimal one to make it to waypoint four. Copy that. Sure, copy that. And it is Get now. that coral yeah. on the lower left. So we have more than enough time to stop and zoom in on anything that you may find. Great. Lower right now. Dead center. Yep. Yep. I'm gonna snap it real quick. Sure. Watch well, Is this something you want better imaging of? Hmm. Um, yeah, we'll just take a look here. Try to figure out what's going on. Looks like an anthemastis or pseudo anthemastis, but I'm not sure what that is that, is that he's sitting on. Video compartial? Yeah. Alright, come back there. Does look like a sponge. Yeah, I agree. It looks like a little sponge. The only other thing it could be, maybe it's a tunicate, but um, probably sponge. And I wonder if that means there's some little rock under there that they're both sitting on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or this uh, coral rubble, cemented coral rubble that we've seen on a few Jumping instances. Down, looking at 50 degrees. Copy that. Yeah. Video is clear. All right, video, when you're happy, come on. Great. Yeah, 
great. Thank you. Amazing. Seeing some pteropod yes. shells on the sediment. Definitely. Go ahead, Bridge. And video, if you want to uh, feel free to, to zoom past skids whenever you want. Copy, uh, copy that. Let me just talk to the pilots and confirm Fine. that uh, four degree turn. Copy. Pilots, are you comfortable if the ship changes heading four degrees? That's yeah. fine. Shouldn't affect you too much. Copy yeah. that. Sounds good. Bridges at ROV Nav. Go ahead with that ship move or the ship uh, heading change. Copy that. Thanks. Can we do a quick zoom on the lower right? It's a little more turned over sediment. Maybe there's a. Uh, a burrow or something we could look into. Guess, Dead center? Yeah, I guess it's not much of a mound, but. Video snaps in. Definitely a little more rubbly like. Mm -hmm. And there is a mound. Huh. Well, let's keep moving. Maybe we're starting to see some outcrops. Copy that. Once the ship finishes its heading change, would you like another move? Uh, yeah, sure. Sounds you guys great. still feeling the uh, three one five? Yeah, I think that's uh, upslope. Pretty good. Yeah. Copy that. I'll call it in once they finish. We've ascended two hundred meters in this dive. It's our highest relief dive so far of this expedition. Go ahead, Bridge. A little urchin on the left. We've seen it before, but you might pass over with a partial zoom. See the object further yeah. up, diagonal left, they're probably going to be more interested in. Mm -hmm. Copy. Just do a partial right here, video. Lasers. Watch it. Any Good covered bridge. Thank you for um, the update. We, and uh, that agrees with so what we're seeing down here yeah. as well. Yeah, so we're thank you. Um, we are ready for a ship move if you are. Probably exciting. More exciting. Further it will be left. three zero meters at three yep. one five degrees. Copy. Speed zero decimal two. Good copy. If we thank get you very this much, bridge. Between our skids, I think we can light that up really nice. And pilots, I just put in another move, 30 meters, 315. Copy. Copy that. Copy I'm going to go a little to your port. That's fine. Auto heading's a little Looks off like another anyway. seat pen. I'm looking at 305 right now. Copy. They may not want this since we've seen a few. Might check. Copy. Video, go ahead, come in. This is what you wanted, right, Watch Lights? Yes, that would be great. Yes, Thanks. I think so. And if we can use the scoop, that would be... Oh, uh, you want to sample this? Is that what I'm here? Um, I'm inquiring, yeah, actually. Yeah, so the ship... There ship had been a suggestion, maybe, of getting one of these sea right pens I just put it a move. Do you want to the sediment? Uh, what do you think? Let's give it a second. Uh, I just asked the chat room um, for more information about how lights? deep this would be, whether yeah, there's the any progress? chance of sure. being able to scoop under it since it's mm -hmm. so large. Yeah. 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 So uh, the comments before about the scooping the sediment is because we were talking about the little red stick C pens that we saw earlier. Oh, uh, uh huh. They were so small that it would be hard to grab with the manipulator. Okay. So there's a suggestion that we scoop it. Yeah. This one is so large that's not necessary. In this one, you can see the polyps are arising on these little ridges. You can see there's kind of like teeth. Yeah. So I, this may be different for the day. This looks to me a little bit like helipterus. So do you think that um, it would be collectible if we tried or or even uh, necessary? This, be, this should be easily collectible. Uh-huh. As a um, snip or as a scoop or what? Or, or, you know, the entire or I, just a snip? Just, just grabbing it. Uh -huh. Just be able to grab and tug it up. And, okay. Um, if so it's not tall. Okay. Bridges are already dead. All right. Would it be um, We'd like to request an easy to, stop if um, possible? Take the specimen to identify it further. 
Good copy. Thank you, Bridge. Well, this is not the one I believe that we've been seeing all day. This, this top may right, be the first observation can. of this, so it's not um, See what you looks know, like the dominant spikes. of the day. And I would have to look in my notes to see if I can see anything about how common it is in this area or if this represents a range extension. I see that Andrea Quattrini is also suggesting Helipterus. And I wonder, Andrea, if you can tell us, do you know of this from uh, the East Coast or the Southeast? And Pilots, for your information, I do not believe we have any samples, so all bio dots. boxes should be available. Um, Copy that. Yeah. Hmm. Any idea what they would be? Yeah, the white dots are likely siphonozoids, so those would be highly modified polyps that have no tentacles, <laughs> and in some species they're used to store the eggs as they're developing. Uh, they also help channel water into and through the colony. Good wow. copy, Bridge. Thank you. Pilots, the ship is currently all stopped. Thanks, Joe. Great, right, thanks. Looking down at you, 80 degrees, but we shouldn't go too much further. Copy that. So, watch it. What's the uh, consensus? Is this a. Are we grabbing this or. Sorry, pilot, we still don't quite have a consensus. We're looking up whether this might be um, something new in this area or not. So, is it possible to hold just another minute? Uh, yeah. Okay, just right on that. Thanks. All right, go for base. Okay, but they want this. Uh, I'm just going to snip it. Yeah, I agree. Yep. There's cool. no reason to scoop this. Yeah, all the uh, helicopters that I have, at least in my database, are oh, from the we'll Pacific. Really that cool. doesn't mean very much we'll beyond that I want. haven't we'll looked at it in the Atlantic. And Andrea is saying that uh, she's observed it during Canix. Um, I think that was uh, expeditions that were up in the northeast Atlantic Canyon, but it was never collected. So I think this is worthy of a collection. Well, great. Thanks very much for looking into that. Right. Pilot, did you hear that? Uh, yes, this is going to be a collection. Yes, right. and when we do that, we were actually thinking of after we um, collect the seed pen, maybe we can scoop some of the sediment here because it has some um, kind of, not rocks, but... Uh, it has some rubble within it that looks like more consolidated, so... Uh, it's worth a sediment collection yeah, as well. Yes, so I can snip it and then go back and scoop it. Yeah, if I can just Sounds reiterate, good. you should be able to put the claw on this and pull it up right out of the sediment like you're plucking a flower as opposed to cutting it. Yeah, copy that. Kupai, can you get uh, joy lock, please? Sure. I'll get you prepped for a sample. Um, can you put Sirius camera on your monitor 12 and help me keep an eye on So we're going to make two collections oh, here, okay. one with the sea pen yeah. and put that in one of the bio boxes. And the then we'll use the you. scoop to grab a sediment sample, which this, the fine grains would represent what we've seen throughout the dive, whereas the rubble material might indicate what is farther up ahead that we probably won't get to today. So or if there is some underlying near-surface rubble box that at one box? point might have been yeah, exposed and broken so down there. and then was covered up. But regardless, so we'll have a, back at a little window a into delta. what the sediment I structure think, uh, is here. We're fine, but help me keep an eye on it. it doesn't seem we'll to lose be a lot of the fine grain material, no doubt, in the collection. You can hit the sled 1 SD or whatever on the bottom row, the very bottom row. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. So, Washi, did Copy I say up. to try to pluck it with the fingers as opposed to snipping it? You want to keep those fog lights um, on? Yeah, I can try that. Try we designed the arms to snip and pluck right. as Thank opposed to just pluck. Me. So I can't promise how good it will try, but if you'd like, I can try it. Because we do have blades on them, so it's designed to snip and then hold it. If I just grab it with the fingers, it might potentially just crush it, and it could just, if it breaks, it float away. I think probably either, as long as you can grasp it, cutting wouldn't be a bad option if you can't pull it out of the sediments. But yeah, I'd just like to say that uh, the peduncle is important, so it would be preferable to pull it out of the sediment than to cut it. Right. Copy. I can try to pluck it, but if it's brittle in any way, it might not end well. 
And Scott, you think the peduncle is too deep to scoop it? I, well, I just don't think you need you to. Could, I think um, it'll easily you the come out of the sediment here. Sediment I expect that maybe four or five sediments into into there. Yeah. Seven, me, right, but the pilot's Not worried that the worried that it'll be cut with the blade. I'll try to. I'll see what I can do. Actually. Yeah. Yeah, maybe if you grab the sediment with it. Looking good. As always, Zen Masters, that's one. Yes. It's fully extended. Scoop. Yeah. Okay, clear. Yep. And that is bio specimen number one on the starboard I'm inboard go bio box. And, uh, get the port bio box. I don't ready. know if anybody has seen yeah, or knows much about different species of Holipterus, but there is Holipterus christii that's known from the western Atlantic U.S. coast into Canada. Um, it's listed as subtropical so maybe this would be pilot this is watch lead yeah watch it go ahead if you can also include a brittle star in the scoop selection or that collection that would be a bonus do you want me to s so the brittle stars are away from where we just plucked it though is that do you want me to scoop oh where we plucked it or if you scoop it doesn't have star. to be the same place that oh, you okay. plucked yeah Oh, I can just, okay. Yes. I can just scoop Yeah, this a is a, a very separate sample from the previous. Copy that. Thank you. All right, uh, do you want to bring wing inboard? starboard wing sure. a little? All right, coming in. Perfect. Board. We'll see how fast they run away. <laughs> <laughs> I think they both escaped. Oh, we got one in the scoop there. Now, if you uh, look yeah. at the quad split, you can see it's still in the shot. 
There is one still there in. Oh, one. great. See it in the yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Right, Excellent. Great. Uh, yeah, go for extension. All right, so this will be Bio 2 sample. I just hit the bottom of the ring. I think that's full extension, though. Yeah, okay. Great. Can you? I would tilt down. Yeah, awesome. Goes. All right. Just got a bunch of sediment there. Looks like a couple more taps should get it. <laughs> you could kind of like, kind of jiggle one of your joints. Sticky yeah. stuff. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, actually, it tells that. Excellent. Looks great. Looks like most of it. Yep. Yep. Great. Okay. And that is retract. Yep. Specimen bio two. Now we'll wing inboard a bit for you to stow. How's that? I like great. to leave it halfway when we're stowing just so we're not pressing so we down on the yeah, cylinder. Can't leave it. Yeah. Totally understand. But I can bring it out more if you need. That yeah, looks good. Board. Hmm. Definitely have some compacted sediments here. So I suspect just under this layer it's been compacted and becoming indurated, That's meaning good. the water is being squeezed out. Right, makes it a little more center. Right. difficult to off. disaggregate. So Extance. forming these little nice job. broken cobbles or pebbles good of sediments. But I suspect they will fall apart. Thank you between my fingers <laughs> later on. All right. I will push forward. All right. And catch up. Copy that. Once you push forward a little bit, I'll go ahead and continue that move. Thanks, pilot. That was great. No problem, Watch it. Watch this five. nav. Copy go ahead, nav. Just wanted to let you know that we have traveled another 100 meters, uh, 900 total. Great. Thanks a lot, nav. Okay, 315. And up. so we've gone 900 meters since we hit the seafloor. Wow. Exploring this ridge. Ooh, auto heading is in. So I asked it's Jason better. Chater from the U.S. Geological Survey if he, Got what he would have expected coming to this feature. And he said um, he rude. would have very much expected a lot of sediment you cover. Just accidentally hit that um, and you thought you were taking auto heading up. The, with little before. or no <laughs> sediment disturbance events Let's to remove any of the cover, the currents can be high from time to time, but it just moves to go to the other side in the lee of the current and then climb up to this ridge. We're looking at about another 25 minutes of bottom time, <laughs> pilots. How much? 25. Okay. Copy. So five. we have another 25 minutes of bottom time. And in the meantime, Jim Masterson 
is with the School of High School students at Harbor Branch o Oceanographic Institute, and they have a question regarding the most common organism we've seen during this dive. And I would definitely say it's the one that we just collected, which is that brittle starfish, which has been all over for most of the seafloor. And as I say that, there's not as many right here, but we've seen them fairly consistently the whole dive from where we first sat down. But there's a little sea star, or maybe that's just the base of an ophiuroid. Video okay, snap it. 40 degrees. It's a little bit behind us now, underneath, I think. It uh, might be just the copy. the base of an Video ophiroid, and some of the arms were covered. Is it on screen at all, actually? Nope. Copy. It was down a little bit further where the camera is heading. Uh, right there. There it is. Ah, okay. And that could just be an ophiroid disc with the arms. Yeah, that's what it is. It's ophiroid, partially buried. Partially buried, yep. All right, moving on. Yeah, so Scott Francis commented was that uh, sea pens have been the most common as a general group, degrees. and so if you're looking at Copy. biomass, it was probably ophiroids. If you're looking at biodiversity, which is the um, multiple species, how many species are there, then Free yes, I would say that sea pens would be 1935 UTC will start the uh, most diverse. lining up to come to the surface. Okay, start setting up at 1935. Copy that. Copy that. Uh, yes, that's correct. Video do a partial. Is this of any interest, oh, Washington? Yeah. Looks like a Xenophia 4. <laughs> Do you want better footage of this, or are um, we going to move on? Yeah, we can probably move on. All right. Video come on. Thanks. So uh, xenophyophores are single-celled organisms yeah. um, that are related to yeah, forams. Ship is and in they the make way. these so structures gluing sediments together. Getting back to the Harbor Branch question, um, if you're looking within the sea pens, the dis disticoptilum is the one <laughs> that we've seen probably most common here, and that's the small red one. And if we do see another one of those, we'll also collect that as a representative of this habitat here. Copy, I'll snap it real quick. Any interest watch leads? Um, That looks more like an anthemastis type. I it's think. not as red as the ones we've seen, but it does look like that, doesn't it? It looks like it has an amphipod right in the center of one of those, or crawling around the back now. I wonder if it could be a very young uh, umbalula. Oh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> Just starting to sprout its stalk. Or maybe one of those question yeah. mark ones. Hard to see. But we'd probably want to move on and look for another one of the more common sea pens, right, Scott? Yeah, Thank this is an interesting on. one to see, but um, I'm not exactly sure what it was. And there's something that was on one of the uh, on the lower side of one of the polyps. That'll be interesting to look at the video later. Yeah, I think that might have been an amphipod, but um, again, need to go back and look a little closer. Crinoid. Watch it. Any interest on crinoid coming center? Oh, yeah. If we could take a quick zoom at least. I think this is the first crinoid we've seen. Clear. We saw one earlier, I Come think, when you were at lunch, but oh, we didn't okay. get a good yeah. shot of it. So, and sure, come on in. I think it was right during the watch change. Yeah, that's a nice one.
Good copy. Let me uh, just double check with pilots. I'll give you a quick call back. It's a perfect time to do that. Yeah. Per excellent. Bridges is nav. That's a perfect time to do that. You're coming to port, so 230. Good copy. Thank you very much. Excellent. Ship is stationary, by the way, pilot. Copy. Our video whenever you yes, have clear. Copy that. You can lift off. Lift it off. Up a little bit, 60 degrees. Copy that. A jelly on the lower right. The video, let's snap it as it goes underneath. Let's be quick. It's very impressive. Can we throw on the extra lights and hope you can that see it gets right it. through it? You can. It just yeah, looks like a it. ring. <laughs> just a second video. Drift forward towards it. Yep. Good copy, Bridge. New heading of tentacles. 230. Mm -hmm. Video is going to flow out because I'm drifting to the side. And wow, there you close. can see it. <laughs> very close. Cool light. That's yeah, a very cool color. I don't remember seeing that. And that this first it reminds game. me of uh, all the slides that we see stained that we use in our teaching classrooms. Uh huh. That's yeah, that's true. <laughs> Thanks, co pilot. Okay, pilot, once you get back to the middle of the screen, it looks like Bush you guys may be ready for another move. I'm going to give her the headphones. The ship's still rotating. Uh, the ship is done. The ship uh, ended its move at 19.14, so three minutes ago. The rotation? I didn't get a good look at that last large jelly, but tube. I think it was some oh, okay, misses. Great. Yeah, let me get center. Thanks, Stephanie. <laughs> Maybe like a three zero zero. Copy that. I will call it in. Great. Bridge, this is RV Nav. We'd like to have another move of three zero meters at three zero zero degrees, speed zero decimal two knots, please. Oh, a Venus flytrap anemone. <laughs> Looks like he's seen better days. Yeah. I wonder what he's holding on to. Yeah. That would be three zero zero three hundred. This is very curious. Where are they getting these? Good copy, Bridge. Thank you. Pieces of substrate. Can't tell if that's just encrusted sediment from somewhere. Can you look on the left uh, that, back side uh, of it? Back Coral side. Rubble. Uh, probably don't have time for that. Oh, he's got a lot okay. growing on I'm him. Just take a quick <laughs> moment. And again, those pink brittle stars are up off the seafloor here. 
I think it looks metallic. Looks like a little gastropod on the left left hand side uh, behind the anemone. Video's clear. Great. Go ahead, come on. Something up, 45 degrees. <laughs> and Jim Masterson from Harbor Branch asked another question from a student, um, which was, what are the similarities of if any, and differences between the environment and organisms seen uh, during today's dive versus that seen during the in the Marianas Trench. And I'm glad that Scott France was able to answer that because I've never been to the Marianas Trench. But in general, there would be fewer suspension feeders um, in the trench because it is much deeper and has lef less food available and weaker currents. But the um, Deep Discoverer has done dives in the Marianas Trench, correct, pilots? Uh, yeah, that's correct. We went down to about well, our limit at 6,000 meters. Even Do you remember much about the habitat and how it might compare? Um, it was, it was pretty uh, diverse, actually. I mean, I mean, we saw, you know, that's where we had the painted canyons yeah that's uh, true we had you know a hundred meter or 100 foot tall hydrothermal vent wow um, hmm. yeah i mean there's a, a lot of diversity a lot of interesting things in that area i think yeah, we had two great. or three cruises out of guam in, in the trench or near the trench well thanks for that dan Oh, and so a correction about the Venus flytrap anemone, the one we just saw. Um, Mike Vecchione said that uh, Daphne Fountain, who's a an expert on anemones, said that that flytrap morphology, morphology isn't a species per se, but rather a posture that many anemone species can use. Hmm, that makes sense. We see them all over the place. And yesterday we saw one that had white and orange on yeah, the inside and we were wondering colored. that it looked very different than the others we had been seeing and maybe it was not a fly trap at all it was just using that behavior well hopefully she or someone can make some ids based on our video of we've seen several or so many that we are referring to as venus fly trap anemones and at least two species probably more that we can't discern with our untrained eyes but maybe someone with trained eyes can uh, go through the video at some point and identify them and that reminds me um, a question earlier in the day was how is this how is the data used and uh, for each group of animals there are taxonomic experts and so there will probably be many eyes looking over this video in Let's coming years um, trying to get a better idea of species identifications what we do there. out here is a tentative field identification but um, 
it re requires a lot of expertise to say for sure what a species is, especially when all we have is video. Of course, this is some of the best video that you could possibly get, but um, some of the characters you can't are not visible um, unless you can actually pick up the organism, um, look at each side, po possibly put it under a microscope, possibly remove some tissue. Good copy, Bridge. Thank you. Video swapping out. Great. Thanks, video. We passed over at least two, and this might be a third coming up on the horizon or on the right, but some more sun stars, the Celaster. Yep. Celaster is the group, but what is the genus here? I think it's genus is Celaster. Celaster, okay. Watch well, it. Do you have any interest on zooms for that? or Should we zoom? Why not? Sure. For sure. The, those people viewing who haven't been with us for a while. Video, if you're able. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. This is the most abundant of the sea stars that we've seen today. We've seen the other. Um, another form called Neomorphaster with five arms, sort of the classic pentameral symmetry. This one has nine arms, so it's very different. It's in a group, common group name would be a sun star. All right, video, whenever you're happy. I'll just keep moving. Great, thank you. Lasers, good. Nav, when you're ready, yeah, you another move toward like a three two zero. Copy that. Three two zero. <coughs> another thirty meters. Yes, please. Yeah. Bridge, this is Hello, Arvin. this is Chris Ma. Hey, Hello, Chris. Chris, how are you? Uh, we'd like to have hey. another move. Of well, three you were focusing on the sun star, and three, I thought, two, well, if you were degrees, being so generous zero, with your time, I thought I should look it up again and see if I could get you a species. <laughs> okay. Um, the closest thing that I can come to is that this is something called Solasta Caribius, <clears throat> which, um, of course, alludes to the fact that the, uh, the type species for this was likely collected from the Caribbean. Um, there are a couple of other possibilities, but as you had mentioned in your earlier uh, narrative, um, we really do kind of need to have a species, uh, or rather a, a specimen, in order to examine the fine details. And so um, there are um, some uh, things like spines and, and other types of mouth uh, sort of uh, morphologies that are what we use to identify uh, different species of solasterids. Solaster, although it's a fairly distinctive animal found all around the world, um, they uh, – they look remarkably alike, <laughs> and, wow. and uh, but but they're they found they're found in almost every ocean, uh, from the Arctic to the Antarctic, and every ocean in between, in shall in, in mostly in cold water settings. Um, they're usually predatory on other echinoderms and other other kinds of animals. So uh, I think we just passed that one, and it, it the the disc was just slightly elevated, and I I bet that that something was probably being fed on below it. So it would I would put good money that it was feeding on either a brittle star or maybe even one of those neomorphaster sea stars that, that you saw uh, elsewhere. So um, there are some places in the Pacific Northwest, for example, where there's some evidence that suggests that solaster, like an avoidance of solaster, will actually drive a lot of the, the kind of defensive mechanisms and and types of uh, uh, behaviors that, that other echinoderms will display. And, um, you know, I mean, I was talking earlier about how, uh, how some, uh, some, well, some, when we were talking, we were looking at the brittle stars being fed on by the crab, how some echinoderms will move away in avoidance of their predators. 
when they smell them or when the chemo, chemo, chemo tactic just cues come same. into the water. Yes. And Solaster is a perfect example because Solaster will cause so many animals to simply move out of its way. You can take, yeah, um, there's a large sunflower like star that lives on, yeah. on the Pacific Coast. It's a 30 arm sea star yeah, that eats everything. And you take a, a Solaster that is one tenth of its All size. Right. And you put it just on, on the edge of one of those big animals, and those things will run away because because Solaster is such a, a, a predatory monster. You know, wow. they, they just eat everything. <laughs> um, and, uh, oh, yeah, they're, they're mean. They're, from the starfish world, they're mean sons of bitches. So, oh, wow. You know, oh, yeah, I know. It's so innocuous, but, but they eat everything. You know, I mean, some from sea cucumbers to... To, to brittle stars, they're they're a top predator. So, um, and there's not any real evidence that suggests that, that the other species don't do that. Um, they they vary in terms of what they or what they feed on, you know. But they usually are always almost always like predators on other um, uh, other sort of large okay, animals, yeah, other you know like so sea cucumbers or brittle stars or or other oh. sea stars. So wow. Every time I see one, I, I'm always a little curious as to what's in, what's below it, or what it's what it's eating, or or what have you. We haven't seen any of them here preying on anything, but um, but you know we have other good evidence from Okeanos, in fact, uh, that shows them you know rolling over other sea stars and and yes, and is. consuming okay. them. Huh. Um, so there's definitely, you know, there's a lot going on, and, and I guess we just don't always see it. So and uh, know, so, you know, lots of, of interesting yeah. stuff. And, uh, you know, I'm just kind of glad like, that uh, we're seeing everything that we're seeing today because we get a lot of these types of animals in dredges and things, but we really don't get to see how they're spatially sort of spread out from one another. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, all of these brill stars, which are all, you know, probably yeah, Ophium Museum Lyman or something the similar to it. They come up yeah, the in comets um, by the hundreds, yeah, and they're all just sort of, now. Right now, you know, they, you know just on top of each other. They're, they're directly you know, the densely packed going against the um, when they're brought the, up in nets. And so when the you see them on the deep sea floor like this, and, they're all um, spread out very, very evenly and, and very widely from one another. So, and even more faster is the same way in the North Atlantic. They're extremely abundant and very dense when they get collected on. On um, trawl nets, come ahead, but have when exactly. you observe them, we'll be coming ahead, uh, half a knot as you know, they come off okay. the bottom. You know, on the deep sea floor, they're they're widely spread out, and they're 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 usually they're almost uh, sort of individually placed. Yeah, that, <clears throat> you know, they're not they're not aggregating. That's so. um Bob Carney called that over dispersed, where they don't want to touch each other, and so they're yeah exactly yeah yeah very careful so, about so their arms and <laughs> yes yes. There's uh, absolutely so um, you know so, so there's a lot of cool you. stuff you're seeing. Uh, it's very subtle, and uh, I think um, uh, I think Leslie was mentioning something up. about observation earlier on in one of her uh, narratives, and uh, and I think that's very correct. You know, observation. Yeah, that's, that's really interesting to just um, have that perspective of um, the opportunities that we have with going down with this really great video um, set up so that we can observe animals seeing what, what they're doing in their normal lives and uh, instead of having something trawled up where it's all jumbled mm -hmm. together with everything else. And, and how different eyes see different things. Mm -hmm. uh, you're yep. looking for the biota, I'm looking for sediments and rocks and uh, other people viewing these in the future or even now are seeing very different things. Well, I always welcome the geological perspective because, <laughs> after all, um, I mean, what was Darwin? Do, right. You know, what was Darwin doing when when he came up with his theory of evolution? That's right. He was being a geologist. So, mm -hmm. anyway, well, uh, thank you, Chris. I appreciate uh, everything that you do, and I'm looking forward to the next dive. Okay. <laughs> so are we. <laughs> Have a good night. Bye bye. Thanks, night. Chris. Well, actually, this is Nav. Go ahead, Nav. Just want to let you know that we have two minutes left in the dive, and we have also traveled another 100 meters, a total of 1,000 for the day. Great. Thanks very much, Nav. 
Well, this is going to be it. We're counting down the last um, few minutes. We've gone a thousand yeah. meters on this dive, which is basically one of the longer traverses yeah. we've made. Yeah. On smudge. Yeah, you come on. Probably because we weren't stopping a million times to look at a million different yeah, <laughs> biota. So less diversity. So we make farther distance, but uh, uh, definitely less diversity. And uh, Andrew Quattrini was reminding us about the fish that we saw just a little while ago.